So today we're going to continue with uh, yesterday's note. Um, yesterday we call it phase change. Today is also phase change. Uh, it said that we're looking at something else. We're looking at the latent heat of fusion and vaporization. So this is the exact same thing as yesterday. It, this is called uh, phase change. And remember, phase change means, uh, oh, I wrote it on the bottom. When you uh, melt ice, when you vaporize water, you're changing from one system to another for one type of uh, substance. So ice is solid. When it melts, it becomes water. So it changed phase, we said. And uh, yesterday I went over this, uh, the meaning of latent. Latent means dormant. And uh, so like it's there, but nobody sees it. Uh, so latent means dormant. Just so that you, you know, a, a nice SAT word for free from Mr. Rosas. Yeah, so you get a lot of uh, SAT words here. And um, now let me give you an example. I have a, a friend who went to UC Berkeley and uh, he had the gene for, his family had the gene for a diabetes. So there was a lot of diabetes people in his family. And when he was under a lot of stress in Berkeley, he turned on the switch. So this is what I'm, my point. The diabetes was latent, it was dormant, and he woke it up with the stress. And so he became diabetic with all the stress. So Sanabagan, do not become stressed, enjoy life, you know, it is what it is. And so he put a lot of stress on himself. Now, why is it called latent? Because it seems like nothing is going on. And like when you're adding thermal energy to ice and the ice is melting, the temperature is still at zero degrees until it melts. Because of that, we say that the heat is latent. Well, let's do an example. Uh, so yesterday we did all the uh, conceptual part. Today we're gonna do the numerical. Now look at this. <clears throat> when I was a child, uh, which was wrong, okay? We used to take lead. I know, I know, it's so bad. And we used to melt it to make little figures, to make hammers. So we used to take a brick like this and uh, and and we used to make like a little hammer figure in here. So we used to make a hole or whatever. We used to make uh, different shapes on it and make a hole on it. And so this we will kind of uh, dig into a break. And then we will pour the molten lead, let it cool down. And once it was cool, you will get a nice figure. The bad thing is when you touch it, the lead goes into your blood system and then it affects your, uh, <clears throat> your learning. So I could have been a genius and never been married, but here I am. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. So I have this little chunk of lead. And so I'm gonna put it in here, this is lead. And so the symbol is PB in chemistry. And so the mass of it is uh, <clears throat> 3.4 kilograms. I'll upper right here. The mass is equal to 3.4 kilograms. And the initial temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. Now the specific uh, heat of lead is 130. The latent heat of fusion is uh, 0.25 times 10 to the fifth joules per kilogram. And the melting point is 327. So once I get to this temperature, it begins to melt. <clears throat> so I wanna melt it. Right now it's solid. And so I need to raise the temperature to the melting point. Once it's there, then I want to melt, not the ice in this case, but it's the lead. Okay, oh, I just took a generic statement there. And then uh, <clears throat> that's all I'm gonna do. So, and, and this is the way you do the math. Uh, <clears throat> now, we saw before <clears throat> that we need to, we, we have a formula for uh, raising the temperature of an object. The formula was 
the amount of energy added, that's Q, is equals to the mass of the substance multiplied by the specific heat of the substance multiplied by the final minus the initial temperature of that substance. So I need to take uh, this 3.4 kilograms of lead and I need to raise the temperature. Now the specific heat of is 130 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. So C is 130, so I got 130. And then I need to raise the temperature. So my final temperature is 327. I wanna raise it to 327. And then uh, my initial temperature is uh, 20 degrees, it's a room temperature. Now that amount of energy will raise it to the melting point where, where the lead is gonna start melting. So I need this to raise the temperature. So all I do is I put this in my calculator and I say, oh, 3 point, wait, I need to turn it on. So 3.4, the multiplies 130, the multiplies 327 minus 20. That's, that's 307, I just put the whole thing. So <clears throat> to raise the temperature from 20 to 327, I need, 135,694 joules of energy. I could have saved 136,000, round it up. So yeah, that's fine. I can say 136,000. I'll make it easier. It's like, keep, keep the change. Okay, now I have it at that temperature. If I stop adding thermal energy, it will go back to being cold or if I, don't add enough energy, uh, it will stay at that stage. I need to now melt it. So I need to melt the lead. And so to melt the lead, the formula is uh, Q is equals to the amount of lead multiplied by the latent heat of fusion. So uh, there are several ways to write this. Um, let me see the way I forgot the, well, I'm just gonna call it HF. Some books also write it like this, latent heat of fusion, some of them they just put L. It's the same thing, latent heat of fusion or just heat of fusion. So I got 3.4 uh, kilograms of it and it requires this much energy to melt each kilogram. So I multiply by 0.25, times 10 to the fifth. And so that will give me the amount of energy needed just to melt it. So let's see. So I get 3.4 multiplied by 0.25 times 10 to the fifth. And so that gives me 85,000 joules of energy. So if I leave this on a fire, um, <clears throat> it will need that much more energy uh, to, to melt the temperature, to, to melt the to melt the lead. So my total energy I need. So I'm gonna put it in blue. No, no, no. I'm gonna use green for this. And so the total energy I need is I'm gonna call it QT. It's equals to Q1 plus Q2. So Q1 plus Q2. So I need 136,000 joules of energy plus 85,000 joules of energy. And so 136 plus 85, 136 plus 85, that gives me 221,000 uh, joules of energy. And so companies that melt metals, they have to take this into account because it's, it's their cost. You know, you have to add uh, thermal energy, even if it is with a torch. So again, what is the most difficult thing here? The most difficult thing is to distinguish what am I going to use from these stages. So let's take a look at another example, and, and hopefully this will make sense. Let me get rid of that guy on the screen. We don't need him. Nope. So 
how much energy is needed to require to turn 100 grams of ice at zero degrees Celsius into steam at 100 degrees Celsius? Okay, so look at this. We're gonna vaporize this. So let, let's think about this. Uh, <laughs> look at this. I have 100 grams of ice. So let me use blue because usually we use blue to represent cold. Yeah. And so here's the ice. Yeah. And then it is at zero degrees. Uh, so right now the temperature is zero degrees Celsius. And then I want to turn into steam. Before I turn it into steam, I have to melt the ice. Uh, so I have to convert it into water. So I have to melt the ice. Think about it. And so say you're in the mountains and you need water. So you take ice, you melt it. Now that you have melted, you have water, okay? So now you have water, just melted the ice. Now remember, I need to vaporize it. So before I do this, I need to raise the temperature to 100 degrees. Raise temperature to 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, now it's at 100 degrees. And right now it is, uh, the water is boiling because the water boils at 100 degrees. And so, uh, so my temperature is 100 degrees. If I keep on adding energy, guess what's gonna happen? Oh, now it's going to, we're gonna vaporize it. So we're gonna completely vaporize the water and it will all become steam. And so now here's the secret then. I'm at zero degrees Celsius, so I don't need to raise the temperature. So the formula that I need to do here is uh, Q is equals to mass times the heat of fusion. I am melting. Fuse means to melt, yeah? So I need to melt the ice. So I'm gonna need this, okay? And I'm doing a phase change. And so my water, it's at zero degrees right now, because remember when it melts, it's at zero degrees, and I need to raise it to 100 degrees. So I must use my formula, Q is equals to mass, times the specific heat of water, times the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Again, the final temperature is 100, and the initial temperature is zero. Okay. So I just brought this. If I keep on adding thermal energy, I am going to vaporize the water. So now let me use the different colors so that it looks nice. My next formula that I need to use is I need to take this mass of water and I need to uh, vaporize it. So it's called the latent heat of vaporization. So I got three equations right here. I need to find, uh, uh, substitute the values and then uh, add them all together. So let's find the first one. I'm gonna call this Q1. So Q1 is gonna be equals to the mass, which is 100 grams. That'll be 0 0.1 kilograms, because remember 100 grams, uh, I need to change it to kilograms. So one kilograms is equals to 1,000 grams. The grams cancel. 100 divided by 1,000, that gives you 0 0.1 kilograms. Yeah. That's where that 0 0.1 comes from. And then I need to multiply by the latent heat of fusion. Now, again, in this case, we use LF. That's fine. Heat of fusion, uh, latent heat of fusion is the same thing. Yeah, so I'm using LF. It's no big deal. So the heat of fusion is 3.3. .3. So 3.3 times 10 to the fifth joules per kilogram. And I'm sorry, the five fell down. It was on top, okay? So I'll put it in my calculator. You know what, let me put it in. Oh, 0 0.1 times 3.3, that gives me, uh, <clears throat> well, I'll put it like this. Uh, 0 0.33 times 10 to the fifth, that gives me, 33,000 uh, joules of energy. This is to melt the ice. That's 33,000. Now let us uh, raise the temperature 
Again, the water is at zero degrees and I'm gonna raise it to 100 degrees Celsius. So I might use the, uh, this formula. So I get 0 0.1 uh, kilograms of water. The specific heat of water is uh, 4180, 4200. They just rounded it, so 4200, that's fine. And then I multiply this by final temperature, uh, which is 100 minus zero. 100 minus zero is 100. So um, I get 4,200 uh, multiplied by 0 0.1 multiplied by 100. That gives me 42,000. So I need 42,000 joules of energy to raise the water to that temperature. And so I got Q2 now, yeah. And then I just need Q3. And so Q3, now I need to vaporize the water. So again, how much water do I need? Well, how much water? Uh, so I got uh, 0 0.1 kilograms. Now the latent heat of vaporization uh, is the same as LD, it doesn't matter, is 22.6 times 10 to the fifth power. So that'll be 0 0.1 times 22.6 times 10 to the fifth power. Yeah. And so let's see how much energy is that. So 0 0.1 multiplied by 22.6 times 10 to the fifth power. I need 226, 226 thousand joules of energy to vaporize. And that's why when you make tamales, notice one thing, uh, it, it requires a lot of energy to, to uh, vaporize all of the water. And so what's my total energy? Oh, the grand total. So grand total, I just need to add the three of them. So that'll be Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. And that gives me a grand total of, well, 226,000 plus 42,000 plus 33,000. And I get 301,000. So 301,000 joules of energy to take this piece of ice, melt it, raise the temperature to 100 so that it boils, and then completely vaporize it. There'll be no more solid, uh, liquid water or solid water. It will all be steam. Now, this is really difficult, but the secret is in identifying what you need. Let's take a look at this. I got silver, yeah? So I got a, a piece of silver that is at 10 degrees Celsius, and I want to melt it. So I want to melt the silver. <clears throat> so how much uh, uh, thermal energy do I need? Well, let, let's start with the solid piece of silver. So here is the silver. Yeah? So there's the silver. And it is at 10 degrees Celsius. Now, I cannot melt the silver until I bring it to the melting point. So I need to raise the temperature of that uh, silver to 961 degrees. So I need to change the, temp the temperature. So I must use Q1 is equals to M times C times final minus initial temperature, okay? So I'm raising the temperature. <laughs> now that is at uh, 961 degrees, I need to melt it so that I can make uh, a chain or bracelet with it. So now I need to melt. Uh, so I need to uh, raise the temperature here. So raise temperature. And now I need to melt it. So now I need to melt the silver. Well, remember to melt the silver, I need to uh, add energy and I need to Find the mass multiplied by the latent heat of fusion because I'm going to melt it. I'm not going to vaporize it. I can also vaporize uh, silver. Notice I put ice and water. It, it doesn't matter what it is. So let's see. 
Oh, this one I only have two equations. So, oh, that makes it easier. Let's see. So Q1, how much silver do I have? 6.3 kilograms. And then the specific heat of silver is 230. So 230. And then the final temperature is 961. The initial temperature is 10. So how much energy do I need? Well, let's say 6.3 multiplied by 230 multiplied by 951. And that gives me uh, oh, 1 million uh, 378 thousand joules of energy is 377999. So I rounded it to make it easier. So I need all of this energy to raise it to the melting point, okay? Now it's ready to be melted. So if I keep on adding more energy, yeah, that's energy too. It, it's just mass is the latent heat of fusion. So the mass is 6.3. Now the latent heat of fusion is 0 0.88 times 10 to the fifth. So that gives me what? 6.3 times 0.88 times 10 to the fifth power. And that gives me 554,400 joules. Now, that's only the energy of the mountain. So what's my total energy? Well, I add both energies. And that will give me the uh, answer. So let us use the red for now. So the total energy that I need is energy one plus energy two. So I add them. So 554,000 plus 1,378,000. And I, mean, I need 1,934,32. Uh, Thirty-two thousand four hundred joules of energy to raise the temperature to the melting point and to melt it. So I hope this is not super difficult. Uh, the hardest thing is to identify which one I'm doing. So I need to raise the temperature and then I need to melt the silver. Yeah. So uh, there it is.